they're starting to get excited to go inside. Chimps are very vocal. They like to make a lot of noise. Exhibiting is just a release of energy, and especially the males, they have all that testosterone flowing through their body. Got to release it, and so it's a show of power and strength, and they'll do anything to make noise. Banging on a door, pounding on the ground, pounding on the windows, anything they can do to make themselves appear big and strong, and their, their, their hair on their body is pile erect or sticking out. And all that is an impressive display. They're showing all the other chimps, who I'm sure already know, but on a daily basis they have to reinforce the fact that they're the head guy. No big deal, not, not anything to be alarmed about. It sounds like a big deal, sounds like somebody's going to get killed, it's so intense. And the females are running around screaming, and it might be legitimate might just be because they're, they're mad and they're irritated that they're being picked on. Might be that they're wanting attention from, yeah, talking about you. I've worked at the Tulsa Zoo now for six years. I take care of the meerkats and the dick dicks, and we also have a leopard tortoise in the dick dick yard. And then the chimpanzees are where I spend most of my day. But I have to go check on the other guys first thing in the morning because we have to make sure everybody's okay, that's keepers. First responsibility in the morning is to check on all of their animals to make sure everybody's alive and breathing and where they're supposed to be, not wandering the zoo grounds somewhere. So We have three dick dicks. They're a miniature antelope from um, eastern Africa. Normally they live in pairs in the wild, but we have one of the offspring that is living with the um, two adults here. And then also in the summertime, we have a resident leopard tortoise that spends the summer out here with the dick dicks, and they get along wonderfully. We actually see Vera, the tortoise, migrating over to help eat the dick dick food in the afternoon. So she has, you know, no, there's no problems with the dick dicks being scared of her. There's no aggression either way. I mean, they're both very docile animals. So um, she just kind of bounds her way over to the dick dick food and kind of like, I'm coming on in, and so you better just let me. They're fine, all three of them are okay, so we're gonna go over and check on the meerkats. Oh, there are a couple awake already. Good morning. It's nice that we have an inside exhibit as well as an outdoor exhibit. They spend more time outside than they do inside in, on gen in general. They love to dig. In the literature, they, they talk about one being the sentry looking standing posts to uh, look out for predators. And uh, once one makes an alarm call, boy, they all shoot down underground. Ooh, they're kind of excited. The tail up is, they're very alert, um, almost coming at you with determination and not necessarily aggression, but uh, confidence, alert. They see the truck, they know that we mean business, by golly. Come down that road, we're getting food. Let's get excited. Wow, look at the mess in here. Did you do all this? Oh, wow. That's Morris in there, our dominant male kind of being impatient about this. Where's our food thing? We do um, apples and oranges in the morning. You know, I don't cut the ends of the bananas off. I give them the bananas whole, let them tear the ends off. Sometimes they'll chew on the ends. Sometimes they'll eat the peel if they're really hungry. Other times they won't eat the peel. When I put the food in the exhibit, I like to cut it up just to give them more opportunity to get a piece of food, the more food that's in there and the more spread out it is, the easier time everybody will get a chance to get some. <coughs> Good morning, everybody! Buddy has his area toward the back. He used to be our um, dominant male who has since then been 
taken over by his son, Morris, who's down here in the foreground. His mother is Susie. Over here on the posts, on the right, is Opie, our next oldest male, who was born in 87. On his right is Jody. She is the third oldest. She was born in 73. Down um, on the rock down next to Jody is Hope, and that is Morris's younger sister. And over far in the distance to the left is Sarah. She is our third oldest female. Come on, Sarah! Good morning, Suze. Trying to keep everybody happy and appeased so they don't leave and run and steal somebody else's food can sometimes be the challenge of the morning. Jody, you ready for your apple? She's the best catch of the group. She'd be on my softball team if I had a chimpanzee softball team. Come on, Al. Jody, stay. Jody. Oh, my gosh. Some mornings just don't go as well as others. Now she's not going to want any more. <laughs> oh, well. That's the life in chimpanzee land. But they'll have many more opportunities to eat today, so it's not like life or death or anything. So I have my little routine that I go through when I come in here in the morning, and then it's nice and fresh and clean for them to come in and mess it all up again. But that's half the fun, because they have to live here every day, and I don't. And well, sometimes I feel like I live here, though, <laughs> but I don't mind. I think it's really nice that we um, can allow them to have a soil substrate indoors. Soil is so much nicer to live on than concrete. Their lives are better for it, I believe, so that's good. Squeegee is the best invention. We give them fresh hay every day, and every night they'll make nests to sleep in, just like they would in the wild. In the wild, they're up in trees, and they've folded the branches over high up in the canopy of the trees. Um, this, so this is a type of mimicking of that. Um, destroying, taking away, removing their nests every day forces them to build a new nest the next night and uh, makes them stay active and have to go through the process again. A lot of zoos vary the diet for the animals on a daily basis, and we're working toward getting that way. Right now, the chimps get the same stuff every day. That's where the novelty foods come in, and that's why the chimps get so excited about them, because they, uh, they get the same stuff every day, which is kind of boring. Hi, Joe. We're getting there, girl. So we're just going to sprinkle a little cinnamon on these apples today, give them a different flavor for the apples all the scents and the smells. Oh, that smells good. It smells like you're on a campfire. There. Hide it all over the exhibit, up in the meshed vents, in between the logs, under the hay, on the rocks. I had an intern working with me this summer, and she just started cutting these onions in little ringlets, and the chimps love them. They'll come in and specifically go find all the onion rings. There are some reasons that keepers have to feed animals in bowls, but for the most part, I think taking their food and hiding it around in the exhibit is much more stimulating for the animal. This is their monkey chow primate biscuit. digging a china in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have uh... <laughs> um, This has all the vitamins and, and minerals and nutrients and everything they need to sustain themselves, but um, we're, we're very good about giving them produce on top of that. Oops. 
there's a wide array of different enrichments that you can do for the primates, which are by far the easiest to enrich out of the animals at the zoo. Excellent, first shot. <laughs> and she wants to get to the inside of that bag. And if I go over there and try and take that bag away right now, she'll be very upset with me. She knows she went outside and she specifically picked that stick for some reason. Um, for the most part, that's all harmless, what she's doing. They get, oh, now she's going to get her finger on it. Oh, Jody, you're in so much trouble. So this is typical mischief that chimps get into. And uh, all my fault, I left the bag in the hallway. But hey, that's enrichment for them. It's not harming her. It's not harming anybody. So until she starts to make a mess, she's OK. Let's hope Alvin. Ready, Joe? Are you ready? OK. I have a bell I ring as a sign to them that it's time to come inside. OK. And one, two, three. Here they come. One, two, three. Morning, bud. Four, Alvin. Five, Jody. Six, Hope. Come on, Sarah. Hi, y'all. What you doing, honey? are in captivity and every day we try to provide them with something new, something novel, something enriching for them that makes their day a little bit different than the day before. It stimulates them, it um, provides some interest to their day. Those uh, 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 are food grunts. Get, they get very excited when they get to eat. They're generally like the most awesome animals to give enrichment to because they get excited about just about everything. And they let you know they're excited. So they come in and they hoot and they holler and carry on. And you know that, oh, good, they liked the enrichment. Some animals, though, you give them enrichment, and you're like, well, do they like it or don't they like it? And so with the chimps, you have no doubt that they're going to, for the most part, they, they enjoy everything. It's rewarding for them and it's rewarding for me. Keepers need positive reinforcement sometimes too. Every day you learn something different about those animals you work with, whether it's how they interact with each other, how they interact with, with you, um, if they discover something new in their exhibit, and that's where enrichment comes in and is so rewarding to us for providing that to them and you get so excited, oh my god, they loved it, that's so cool, I'm going to do that again. Okay, guys, there's bugs in there. You got to dig for them. Well, we put some dirt from their exhibit in the egg crates and then put some mealworms in there. And they can smell the mealworms, I'm positive. And they um, are going to now have to figure out how to get to the mealworms. And last time we did this, they eventually ended up tearing open the egg cartons. But in the meantime, they, they try putting their hands through, or their, yeah, their, their arms through the front, through the, through the top of the egg carton and trying to extract them that way. They turn them over, sometimes they fall out. So it's a good time consuming enrichment for them to have to really work at getting the bugs out of the cartons. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Crazy, crazy. It's a real misconception that people even want to consider wild animals as pets in general. And, you know, you come out and you see these animals and they're cute and they're cuddly and, boy, I would just, I would really like to take one home and take care of it and have it be my pet. But when you talk about primates as pets, you're entering a whole other world in my mind because they are incredibly social. 
They are incredibly strong. They don't think twice about destroying something. On top of the fact that you know primates can transmit diseases very easily to humans, and vice versa, it's um, it's it's really horrible. And and then you know you have the whole entertainment scenario too, where those animals are being used in the entertainment field, put in you know human clothing and and paraded around and completely exploited for what it completely does not represent. And in actuality, you know the best case scenario is. All these animals are in the wild and they're living in their natural habitat, but we're, we're living in this century and that's not going to happen. And There's already these animals in captivity and they, they're living in zoos and we need to make those situations the best we can for them, but at the same time, they shouldn't be being paraded around in human clothing and made to look like fools. I mean, they should be represented for what they truly are, which is a very exotic, endangered animal, and they should be portrayed in that light why do you have to have it as a pet? It's not necessary. You should just admire them for who they are. Here comes Joe. What's in there, she says. Huh. It's so hard not to put human context, human words and emotions into their behavior because they're just so similar to us in so many ways. <laughs> That's exciting. Hi, handsome. Good boy. Drink, bud? Well, what we're doing is an Good operant boy, conditioning. For instance, having them present their shoulder to receive an injection rather than being darted by the vet, which is a very stressful situation. So having the keeper come over and ask them for their shoulder and them presenting their shoulder willingly cuts down on stress tremendously and you, uh, you make it better because it's stressful on the keepers too when their animals are freaking out from being hit with a dart. Because it's a medical procedure, a yearly exam they need to go through or if they're injured or whatever. My goal here right now is to get all the chimps um, reliably presenting their shoulder to receive an injection. Okay, ready? Shoulder. Hold. Little by little, you through positive reinforcement, you're having them figure out that, hey, this isn't a scary thing, this isn't bad, because I get this dynamite reward at the end of it. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. And, and I keep a log of everything, so on a daily basis I write down how they did and I can look back a year ago and say, oh my gosh, he wasn't even coming over here and sitting down and staying here a year ago. This is a normal, content face. And, uh, oh, but that's a face that wants to spit. <laughs> Are you just telling him something there, bud? Um, so, all right, I hear you. I hear you. Let's go. General animal sense is really important when, when they're looking for somebody to hire a, in a keeper position. And they also, you know, if you have exotic animal experience, you're that much ahead of the game because it's sometimes hard to, achieve, to get that experience. Volunteering in the zoos is like probably the number one way people get experience. And if you have the determination, the desire, the will to volunteer, which is very hard when you're not getting paid anything, to volunteer at a zoo to gain knowledge of these animals, you're showing that facility that you really care and that you're willing to do that to get on as a keeper. Well, okay. Zoos are looking more for people that have associate's or bachelor's degrees. Some keepers even, even have master's degrees. Um, they may be working toward moving themselves up in another direction, but they, they're starting at the keeper level. And um, maybe it's because this is the area of the zoo I work in, but I feel that the keepers are really the core to the zoo because they're who take care of the animals, and that's why we're here, to take care of the animals. No, you see him bouncing like that? That's excitement. They're, when they get excited, they bounce around and they, they learn something new from these animals every day. And that's what's so rewarding about being a zookeeper. These are animals that not every Joe Blow gets to work with. And you have to take pride in the fact that, that you were chosen and that you are privileged enough to have the opportunity to be in their presence. They're in captivity and we've put them there, but you are the one that's taking care of them. And, and by all means, it's a very rewarding job and anybody who's in the field will agree that we take our jobs very seriously. Good girl, Sue. What a good girl you are. Main thing that I do out here is 
pick up any leftover monkey chow that they didn't eat the day before, and then any feces that are out here. And you know, it's just, somebody's got to pick it up. Otherwise, they'd be living in a, a lot of it, and we can't have that. That's unsanitary. They utilize every square inch out here, too. So you got to kind of look everywhere for poop. My brothers always make fun of me because they think I have a really cool job. And one's my, one of my brothers is a lawyer. And they're always like, but Mo, you got a really cool job. And you like going to work every day. And I don't. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, there's pros and cons to everybody's job. And you do it because you love your job. And it's very rewarding. And you feel lucky to have the opportunity to do the things with the animals that you do. They allow you into their world. And that is so... Good girl, too. There's just not words to explain how grateful you feel for them allowing you the chance and the opportunity to learn more about them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And um, I'm grateful to them every day. And, uh, you know, they're half the reason I probably will <laughs> never leave Tulsa, Oklahoma, because <laughs> I'm too attached to them, so they become like family, and it's, it's just an unbelievable feeling, and uh, I, I love my job. All right, you guys want to go back outside? Ready, Morris? You feel like you're making a difference, whether you're helping um, animals, which are obviously in captivity, but they're here, they're under our care, and we're the ones that put them here, and they need, they need excellent care while they're in captivity, and I feel that I'm given the chance to make a difference in their lives, and I'll do everything I can to make sure that they have a good life while they're in captivity.